Hello artists and welcome back to another extremely positive video about failure. Um, so I'm not trying to, uh, I guess, seek attention by saying all oh, my work is so crap and then put some like mediocre or really good paintings up and then to have everyone comment, oh my god, your work is so amazing because young people, if I can teach you one thing, it's uh, don't care what other people think, including good and bad. You just need to do you, appreciate any good that comes towards you, but at the same time, you know, keep yourself humble. So today's topic is failure. I know that a lot of my audience is quite young and at the beginning of their, I guess, artistic endeavors. So I know what it feels like to, I guess, invest so much time into drawing, painting, printmaking, whatever it is that, you know, uh, I guess you enjoy doing for your practice to then turn around, look at your previous work or your current work and feel so dissatisfied and just wanting to destroy it all. And any of you who watched my uh, degree show, recent degree show review that I did of my degree show where I graduated uh, a couple years back, um, you'll know I felt this about my own work kind of looking back now. And those were paintings that I thought were so-so at the time. So. This video is all about revealing the paintings that I thought were pretty much complete, complete and utter failures and the ones that I'm gonna, gonna be discussing that were not complete failures, that a big part of them were still failures. So I'm gonna be kind of explaining through my own thought process what I did learn from failing and kind of always twisting it into a kind of a, I guess, a positive learning experience. And this is where Instagram archive comes in handy. I have deleted a lot of posts on Instagram, but thank goodness I, uh, I kept a few of them in my archive. So any of you who are a little bit aware of uh, my artistic practice, um, you'll know that I do digital mock-ups uh, before. So I basically plan a kind of digital kind of painting to then transfer onto canvas. And you can see here in these ones, these are my early ones where it's just like, wow, I learned how to use the motion blur effect. But looking at, back at them now, they kind of lack any kind of meaningful convert, uh, composition. The imagery is boring. Um, the, I guess the effects are not contrasting at all. And maybe I was possibly going for some kind of, I don't know, soft blurred effect, but I feel like it just really doesn't work. So this is, these are my kind of early digital days where I just started kind of using uh, digital as a means of whipping up compos compositions and starting to plan for my artwork. I think the uh, I think the coloured blurred bits were um, parts of feathers, if I recall correctly. As for paintings, you have no idea how many paintings I have taken off of uh, stretches to dispose of and not documented. If there's one piece of advice I can give to any of you now, is regardless of how much you hate some of the work you do, always document it because one day you might want to tell a story about it, just like I am right now. And I would have so much more content to speak about if I just did document those failures. So I'm going to start by stalking myself on Google where you can pull up my Royal Drawing School Foundation profile. Now, the, the painting that they chose this space, so I had three paintings, all of them, well, one of them was okay, two of them were horrible. I classify this one as one of the horrible ones. I think the blue was absolutely stunning but oh my god that that cloud this was actually i think the second painting i had ever done with linseed oil and i had just started using uh, oil painting mediums and i remember exactly what i was going for let me show you what my what was in my head when i was painting this it was actually gerhard richter's cloud series so let's go to gerhard richter's cloud series and then back to my cloud and then back to gerhard richter's cloud series my cloud is not Gerhard Richter's cloud, it's trash. <laughs> the blue is nice, but oh my days, it looks, like a, it looks like a flat sticker just pasted onto an amazing, uh, I guess, hue of blue. Now we'll move on to pre-degree show. You can see how I'm, I guess, trying to develop an abstract style still, this kind of balance between abstract and realism, but so I guess some of the textures in this are okay, um, but overall it just really doesn't sit well. Uh, the values of all the warm colors I'm using for the type of style I wanted are just, they're too close to one another, so it looks really flat. Um, not to mention that the way that I've used the paint makes it also look, once again, so unfinished in many areas. 
So the paintings I'm gonna go through next, uh, I guess uh, this is within my time period in China. So this is within the past couple years. So the, all the paintings I'm about to show aren't complete failures. So there were things that I learned from them, but sometimes failing isn't making uh, something which is completely disgusting. Sometimes failing is like, this painting is like 60%. So you've done something that's a little bit good. But then on the other hand, you're like, I'm not satisfied with this. I don't believe in it. So I don't want to put it anywhere or sell it to anyone. Um, so then it just becomes more of a learning experience, but learning experience. But then as a painting overall, it's, it's a failure, if that makes any sense. This is my perspective anyways. So this painting here, I think was actually one of the very first larger paintings that I did uh, when I arrived in China. And I was going for a large abstract floral uh, masterpiece. Um, I don't know why I chose a primary color, a primary color scheme. I was going to say primary color color scheme. That sounds like a bit of a mouthful, but most of the time you don't want to be going with red, yellow and blue uh, all in the same kind of color scheme. Uh, it's kind of difficult to control those colors to make it look good. And I feel like this just, it looks really plastic. Some of the textures are really decent um, in some of the areas, but overall the composition is just extremely busy. It's once again, that lack of translation from my digital plan to a painting that as a painting, it just looks like a flat sticker collage kind of effect rather than something that is like, I guess, tangible and believable as an abstract flower painting. Another couple of examples of when you just try something new and it just doesn't work. So I think with these ones, I was starting off with a, an acrylic toned based underlayer where I was trying to define tones in black and white and then painting on top. Um, I don't know where I got that from. I don't remember why, but I remember just looking at these plans and thinking that they look so plastic. I'm not even going to continue these because it just looked like, I don't know, a cartoon and it was just not what I was uh, intending or going for. Once again, kind of uh, traditional studies on the side or just the odd painting here and there. Bad study of a lighthouse, uh, messy brushwork, um, just not very, not, not very defined drawing wise and the colors just all over the place. Now this weird eagle kind of piece ended up being a series of like experimental paintings. Um, it's kind of interesting to see the different stages it went through. So I actually started off as a completely abstract red painting, um, then turned into this weird green eagle thing with like foliage and waves. Um, and then I got, and then I got really annoyed with the eagle because the drawing was really bad. The colors, I, I was kind of using green really for the first time properly, trying to understand green. So I got annoyed with my painting. It wasn't neat, the drawing was bad. So I was just like, screw the eagle. So I, <laughs> I covered it all in white. It then turned into almost a completely abstract, weird still eagle thing with all of these teal and crimson colors coming off with me practicing my abstract textures again. And yeah, that was the, the final result of that painting. I can't remember where it ended up or what happened to it. So I wouldn't call this one a complete fail, but it certainly was a mess simply because of how unstructured that kind of, I guess, painting approach was. I know some people use very kind of unstructured painting approaches when it comes to their practice, which is absolutely fine. I'm not speaking against that, but personally for me, I have a very structured and orderly approach when it comes to my paintings and planning. And I feel like the quality of my work is much higher when my planning is better. And doing something spontaneous like this tends to just waste time for me and produces something which is below, uh, I guess, my standards. Alongside that eagle geezer, um, I also had another kind of foliage bird, but I remember the values of like the wings and the drawing and stuff. Also just, um, it just wasn't defined and it was just a mess. The colors, the color scheme I think was quite interesting, but just overall as a painting, it just, it just didn't work. So those are a few of my fails. I, I apologize for not having more. As I said, you should really document the work that you hate as much as you document the work that you love. 
Um, I'm actually saving some like A-level sketchbooks, more sketchbooks from my raw drawing school, like my personal project stuff. So there's, there's funny fails and stuff in there that I will go through at when I do kind of sketchbook tours. Um, check out my raw drawing school uh, sketchbook tour. That's from my foundation year, if you haven't already. And um, yeah, so, so that's it for today. I'll do those at a later date. As usual, of course, to check out these videos, subscribe if you haven't already. DM me on Instagram if you have any questions or comment below in the comment section. And um, I guess that's it for today. Here is my awkward goodbye.